Hi, I'm Trevor Davenport and welcome to the Smoke Channel. Today I'm going to show you a simple way to extend your brass life using salt bath annealing. Stay tuned. The reason why I got into annealing was a few years back me and my wife, we were shooting all the time. And after about four or five reloads, we realized that a bunch of our brass was getting split necks. We'd have to throw it out, buy new brass. And my brother was actually talking to me about annealing. I was new to it, didn't really, I've heard of it, but I didn't really know what it was. So I started doing my own research and I realized there's a bunch of different ways to anneal brass. And if I was gonna do it to save money, some of these annealers are into the thousands of dollars. And I can tell you, thousand bucks can buy me a lot of brass. So I wasn't really interested in that and I was kind of looking for a cheaper way to do it. I saw that you can do it with a torch and spin it around and I, I've tried it, I've done it and it's actually worked really great. But my brother brought up an idea that he had seen called salt bath annealing. It intrigued me so I started looking into it. And that is when I came across Ballistic Recreations. They actually sell actual annealing salt, where you can take the salt that's in this, put it in your Lee Precision melting pot, heat it up to a certain temperature, dip your brass in, pull it out, throw it in a bucket of water, and pretty much you're, you're done. Uh, and, and it was very consistent. When you have a torch that's thousands of degrees and you're trying to spin a piece of brass around it, for me, I, I didn't feel comfortable with it. All right, I'll show you how you can do this yourself. So. You have your annealing salt, it comes in this container, and I can tell you one container of this will, will last you for thousands and thousands of rounds of annealing. I recommend getting a few of these, only because it costs a little bit to ship, you might as well get multiple of them, and then, like I said, I've done this for a few years, and this is my second batch of it. The first batch, most of it's in there. When you dip your brass in, a little film may get on it and you'll see the levels of the salt slowly go down. So every once in a while, I'll just add some to, to fill it back up. Also, you wanna be very careful. This stuff will get, when to the right temperature, you're gonna be over 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So you don't wanna have your powder and everything right next to where you're gonna be annealing, just, just for safety reasons. Um, I plugged this in about three or four minutes ago. As you can see, it's heating up. I don't know if you can see that, but right now we're at 310 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to take about 15 minutes or so before it, it reaches to temperature. When I'm done with it, after each use, I unplug it and all that salt just melts into one big clump. Right now, uh, I guess it's a little melted already, but you can see there's that big clump that just has everything hooked together. When this heats up to temperature, I'll take it all apart and I'll show you like all the pieces that I have and show you what I built. I'm a cheap, cheap dude. So um, I don't have very much money into this, but it works. The bullets that we're gonna be reloading today are 6.5 Creedmoor. And I just make a little chart every time, little notes of what my brass, like the number of reloads, what needs to be done. This is telling me this is the 11th reload um, that I've done, it needs to be annealed, and then I need to body size it, trim it, and do the rest of that. So, like I said, before I was getting five or six shots out of a reload before it split next, I'm already on reload number 11 on this, and, and there's no signs that, it, that it's wearing out. Um, I think the most I've done, and, and they're still shooting just fine, I think I'm on reload number 14 or 15 out of a 243. So, anyways, well let this heat up and I'll show you what else needs to be done. All right, so we just reached temperature. We're there at 950 degrees. I did a test round. I dipped this Creedmoor case into there to see what the level of the salt is. I pulled it out, I didn't drop it into, let's see if I can get that. I didn't drop it into the water so the salt kind of stuck. So you can see it's right there on the edge. That's exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna set a metronome on my computer that's right over here, turn the speakers up so every seven seconds we'll know to pull out a different case. So let me go do that. Okay, we're at temperature, got everything ready, got a metronome playing in the background. 
So every time it does a high pitch, that high pitch, I'm gonna drop a case in, pull the one that's been in there out, drop it in a pail of water and repeat the process. And the more you do this, you're pretty consistent. We're talking half a second off on some, but it, it, this way it doesn't make a difference. I'm gonna have my GoPro here recording so you can kind of see what's going on here. So we'll get started. Drop it in on that sound. And pick up another piece of brass. So when it does the sound again, I'll drop it on this side. Drop that one in. Pull that one out. Pell water. Drop that one in. Pull that one out. Pell water. You can do this pretty fast. Just keep on punching through them. You'll want to every once in a while take a look at your thermostat to make sure that it is between that 930 and 950 degrees. To be honest, all the way up close to 1000 degrees and I didn't notice any difference on my brass. I've read a bunch of forms and everybody has their own opinion. Like I said, I've had up to 14 reloads and I'm still reloading that brass today so it's definitely extended the brass life. It might be a trial and error thing, but for me this is a pretty quick way to anneal a bunch of brass and it's a very easy do-it-yourself at your house. You don't need a ton of equipment. The main thing is just being safe about it. These can get very hot. I've burnt myself a couple times, but in the end, All right, so I unplugged everything, letting it cool off, dump the water out, rinse these off. Um, I've gone from this point, just put them on a dehydrator, drying them all off, right back to body size in and finishing the reloading process. Um, but most of the time, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna drop it in the Sonic cleaner, get it all cleaned up, and then continue the reloading process. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video uh, we enjoy making them i'm not telling you this is the best way to anneal brass but i have seen it work and it is the way that we do it so anyways stay tuned for more more videos it's getting to the end of the year and we're gonna start be plugging along doing a lot of shooting now that hunting season's over so stay tuned hopefully you guys have a merry christmas and a new year